Right, let's begin, shall we? How are you doing, everybody? Hope you're doing well. I'm almost back to normal, so uh, good enough to do some code anyway tonight. So we'll uh, we'll get cracking with Czech and I'd carry on from where we left off last week. Um, probably sound a bit croaky, but I'm all right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. Damn it, I thought I'd fix that. Let me swap earphones. Maybe it's just that side. Hey, Monsters Go Boom. Thank you for the uh, sub, Amok, um, Amok64101. Let me sort your uh, thing out while well, I chat. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I felt like absolute crap this week. Um, really wasn't up for it. I wanted to play Battlefield all weekend, and I didn't really get a chance to do that. I spent most of my time in bed. Um, I did get to play a bit, but just not quite enough. That's No, it's too loud. <laughs> Um, let me catch up with the the the, uh, the feed. Thank you for the resub fit round. Thank you for the host Pro Seven. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the host Danny Magic Knight. Uh, thank you for the sub. I've already said thank you for the sub to Amok. Uh, thank you for the bits, uh, Nicomo. Thank you for the resub uh, SP, and thank you for the bits as well, Sean. All right, let me um, let me fix Amok's. Uh, I have no idea how many points you had before, so I've got to try and find you in the list, which should be quite fun. Um, yeah, so if I sound a bit croaky tonight, that's why. If I if I start having a coughing fit, don't worry, it's perfectly normal. I seem to have pulled a muscle in my side as well from coughing so hard, which is why I've got the DP and got the DP out to uh, uh, to fix it. Oh, you had zero. Oh, okay, there we go then. <laughs> Andy, <laughs> let's go, Brandon. That's the uh, I can't remember which news network it was, but it was a news network who tried to cover up the fact that the um crowd was saying "fuck Joe Biden," weren't they, or something? And so the right wing have jumped on it, and they're using it as some stupid call to arms for their for their crazy their crazy people. Um, stupid, really, whatever. Um, okay, so I don't need to do that with the stream elements things. Also, I maybe blow my nose randomly as well. I'll try to uh, move my microphone out of the way when I do it, but it should be all right. <coughs> and there we go with the coffin. Uh, I'm drinking. Oh, I haven't changed what I'm drinking tonight. I can't be bothered changing it either, but I'm drinking Copperberg Cherry tonight. I've not um I've not had a, a drink for a few well for a week, so I thought I'd treat myself tonight. It's alright as well. It's alright. I'm sure I had this before and I didn't like it. But I think it might have been a different brand, but not another another kind of cidery brand, but um but cherry, yeah, it's quite nice. Uh, what level am I on? Twenty forty two. Um, thirty two, thirty three, or something like that. I don't know. Played a little bit just before the stream. Let's see how good play we do. I don't have the time. Um, I don't have the time like you do, Sean, to play. You play. You play way more than I do. Um, no, what level are you now, Sean? By the way. He must be close to forty now, right? Yeah, I was gonna say he must be he must be up to uh, forty. I couldn't sleep last night, so I spent um I spent about an hour just on one of the uh bot servers just practicing flying the helicopter. Um No, I I, I practiced playing it actually last night at Quiffin. It was it was uh I've got used to it now. I've got used to it. I think I can probably just about fly it acceptably took a while though took a while to get used to it and i stopped trying to do it on the pad the pad was screwing me up it gave me false confidence the pad it made me think it was a bit easier but um but it's it's not it's actually a lot easier on the mouse if you if you set the settings right and you set your view right then it's it's um <coughs> thank you oh, god's sake <coughs> 
<coughs> Thank you for the bits as well, Doctor. Appreciate it. Um, all right, let me give you all some points. I think what they're going to do with that hovercraft is they're going to make it like the jeeps, um, and they're going to give everybody uh, ev every. Um, so I was thinking of giving everybody points. I think they're going to give the um, uh, the hovercraft the same armor as the jeep, so one shot kill from a rocket launcher. Because at the moment it's it's too uh, it's too strong, and it shouldn't be like that. It's it's meant to be like the the, the jeep with a bit more firepower. Um, well, thank you for the bit steps. Appreciate it. Um, so, before we start, I'll just go over a few things. So, um, this month's competition. Um, I hope I hope somebody's entering it. <laughs> um, but it's um, how long have you got left? Two weeks. About two weeks. Yeah. Um, so it, it can be pretty much anything, anything you want it to be. It just needs to be something that I base from those rules. It's do, just be nice to get a little demo together for, um, you know, get get it ready for for the release, basically. So we've we've got something we can say we've kind of collaborated on as a community, which would be nice. Um, yeah, I hope somebody has made something. I might have a go at making something if I get some time. Nothing fancy, but just. Uh, repurpose some stuff so um the other thing is is the christmas competition for the mega 65 giveaway uh the, well not really a giveaway the mega 65 prize um at christmas the closing date for that is two weeks tomorrow or saturday uh and the um emulator version gets locked down tomorrow so whatever version the emulator is on tomorrow is going to be the let is going to be the um the version of the emulator that's going to be tested so make sure if you are working on something and i hope people are i know there's at least one person working on something which is good um uh but if, if you are working on something just make sure that it works on that version of the emulator i will be putting out um i will be putting out a message to say as such and yes if there are any bugs um in in xemu tomorrow that are, are like critical uh, then it'll be the version before i'll make sure that i do some testing around around the various things um if i can get through the stream uh, that'd be nice <laughs> um yeah anyway it's, i've got 27 people joined i've just not had any entries yet but they may be waiting for this this thing tomorrow so um oh, every time i cough it feels like my ribs want to jump out of my side of my stomach it's horrible side of my chest um and that's it really um nothing really more to add oh uh, one thing i am going to do I, i've been i had loads of problems getting the the case for uh protons um mega 65 printed and i think it might be the filaments i think the filaments may have uh hydrated a little bit uh so what i'm going to do for the remaining three so there's three more uh, that can be won. So there's one for this this month's competition, and there's two uh, as second and third prize for the um, for the Christmas game compo. Uh, I'm just going to print in the in the filaments that I think are the best that will work the best. Uh, so there won't be any color choice for the for the for the last three, unfortunately. But I, I think I'm probably going to use the sparkly black filament as the main color, so it'll still look nice anyway. So. Um. <clears throat> oh wow! Right. Okay. So we're going to do, let me start the races for you. We're going to do um, check and I tonight, obviously. Um, we've got quite a few things uh, to look at. Um, generally, the game is getting better and better all the time. We're finding and squashing bugs. Uh, I think the last, uh, where's the race button? There it is. I think the last, uh, last week's stream was pretty good. We managed to squash uh, some pretty uh critical bugs no i don't have a filament drying you know i i i'm gonna get one but i don't want to get one until i move i've got i've really not got much room at all i know it's not that huge but i have zero room so um and i've got quite a lot of filament that probably is is like that i try and keep it in in the, the bags with the little silica gel packets but um it's not quite enough um i think and i think what's happened is is just because the ones that are in the machine have been out for a while 
um, and I haven't taken them out of the machine. I think they, those have gone a bit um, bit hydrated. So I just need to, I do need to dry them out. I'm not going to throw them away. I'm just going to dry them out. Like you say, get a high de- you can use like a food hydrator or something, can't you? Or you can buy special ones. So, uh, But I've seen people just using food hydrators. So um, you need to keep your nozzle dry. <laughs> The, the nozzles on this are actually pretty good, and I've got a whole set of spare nozzles and and different um, uh, widths and stuff on them. So, oh Jesus, oh, I really, really hurt, man. Uh, yeah, still old HVSC. I've not been well, proton. I've not had a chance to do do very much. And what what chance I have when I have felt up to something, I've taken it in just playing games because. Um, there's been two new games come out in the past two weeks, and I've really not had enough time to play either of them. Really, mm-hmm. putting it in rice, it probably would work actually to a certain extent. Thing is, I think it needs heating up. That's the problem. It does need to be heated up. It's not just uh, you are lazy. I've been ill for God's sake, man. Still managed to get your freaking thing sent out. Anyway, oh, is that a new series? I think that might be a new series, yeah. What is it? Uh, McKern. No, it's... Thankfully, though. I can't see that very well, but thankfully, no COVID. Um... Okay, cool. So um, let's look where we were at last time. We were just in the process of adding the little uh, sp- sprite, um, uh, kind of the staggered sprite introduction for this screen. That was just a red, a red line drawn on a lolly stick. I'm so glad they've changed them now so you don't have to scrape your tonsils. Because that was horrible. Did not enjoy that at all. Oh, I've gone grey for some reason. Okay, we need to look at why that's happening. That's interesting. Yeah, it's gone grey, hasn't it? That's weird. It's definitely not white. Okay, I need to figure out why that's happening, but... Okay, so it's this screen is what we're working on now. Okay, um, my first note is I don't like them all flashing at different times, so I'm going to line up the flashes on, on those things. Um, let's just see what happens when we kill everything. And then we need to make them respawn again on the second one. Okay, so we've got some st- starting space to do, so let's start by making them all uh, spawn. Uh, well, the spawning staggered, but we need to make the uh, the things flash um, in 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 sync with each other. Because in a moment they kind of flash all over the place, they look a bit weird. Um, where is this now? No, we're trying. There we go. Looking at no view. My brain's still not working properly. I was writing up, um, well, not writing up, but uh, scoring some vulnerabilities today, and it took me ages to do it. It's something that should be relatively simple, and uh, it took me just ages to do it. I couldn't, my my brain couldn't connect all the dots in the various places, so I could focus on one little bit of the the problem. But when I was trying to write it down as a coherent kind of block. It was just, no, it wasn't working at all. Uh, Kmithin was the inspiration for at least one of my series. Bad jokes. <laughs> <coughs> okay, right. Um, I will make a note, though, to do HVSC. I'll try and get it done for the weekend, but no promises, because... It isn't. It isn't just straightforward copy paste job done. There's a little bit of work with it as well. So, um, but I will make a note to do that. If I can find my pen. I 
can't even see. It's so small, I can't see the uh, which series that is. Is that the same series? <laughs> anyway, there's a couple of new series in here as well. There's um, who's actually added one this time? I think Andy's added one. Uh, Gahim's added three, uh, and Quadrisol's added another one as well. So there's there's five series total that have been added. Okay, so first of all, we want to deal with the flashing of the sprites. So I think what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just using the timer um, to work out whether they should be red or white. I just need to change that. I just need to figure out where the hell I did it now. It's got to be in here somewhere. Also, I need to keep my eye on the memory targets as well and make sure that we're keeping within the bat of the right bounds, which I think we are anyway. Okay, this is just a draw draw a spawn sprite. There we go. So this checks the timer. If the timer is non-zero, it goes here. However, if the timer is zero, it removes the sprite and spawns um spawns get next yeah and, and spawns spawns the new um item because uh, it won't go into this the draw a spawn sprite is this bit here if the timer is at zero then it jumps to here and just does the normal um robotron character draw otherwise it comes in here but then what it's doing is it's using um where's the color here so it's using the current spawn timer to work out what color it should be but what we can do is we can change that for one of the zero page where so we've got a zero page uh counter somewhere well, let's find it it's in here somewhere frame timer that's it which actually makes this slightly faster as well because we don't have to use uh is this in a block no we don't have to use um indexed address and we use zero page it saves us a couple of cycles as well thanks cb meeks yeah i'm feeling i'm feeling a lot better um still not 100 percent, but um but definitely a hell of a lot better than i was at the beginning of the week um i kind of felt okay ish on tuesday uh but it wasn't i wasn't good enough to stream i was still coughing and spluttering quite a lot um i was quite tired even though i'd slept most of the night so move to the side so you can see the back Blue ball. Um, if only we could add series on our own, so that even Shalom wouldn't know. I have considered doing that. I I was I did look at um writing a, a kind of uh a background series website. So it's a site where you can go and you can look at what series have already been discovered, uh, what image you know what images are in there, and you can see the images as well. Um, and that is something that might happen because that's quite a simple thing for me to do. Um, and I can just kind of, I can actually, I, I would have to move the list, the storage of the list to online rather than local. Um, but it's, it wouldn't be a massive task, a couple of hours or something like that to sort that out. Uh, but part of that, I was considering allowing users to update, upload their own series. But exactly what you said, to, in terms of service issues, I was thinking probably not the... Um, probably not the best idea but then i i did look at um because there are um there are like safe search algorithms as well that um uh you know, you know that people like google and stuff use because obviously they don't manually check all those images um but i don't know how i don't know how good they would be and i don't know how how granular the, the detail is for that like i don't know how if i can um prevent certain very specific things from appearing on stream um I, I imagine if it's if it's good for safe search it's probably good for the stream as well but just copy already find files into a dropbox folder and share it yeah i could do but again i'd still have to write a script to sort them out anyway because it's um at the moment all that data is stored um in a local file and i'd have to cross reference it. it's just loaded in by the programmer um 
Um, yeah, but there's there's some there's some possibility of something like that happening. It's not going to happen this year though. I'm too busy this year. Um, yeah, image collects something which can scan images um, and and work out whether they're safe or not. That's basically what I'd need to do that. But um, but yeah, it's it's something I consider because a few people have asked about whether or not it's. Um, we could have some way of checking those images, and I think that would be the safest way to do it. So, uh, right, okay, let's let's run this and check that the colours are all in sync on that page. Should be, I think. Yeah, it'd have to be more than a name check. <laughs> That's for sure. My new overlay, which I again is just another one of those things I haven't got around to doing yet. Oh, look, it's done it again. I flash red and then I go like this grey colour. I have no idea what that's about. I wonder if that's to do with the timers. All right, well, we'll take a look at that in a minute. I don't know why that's happening. Plus something to fix. Uh, but my new... There, yeah, that's better. They're all flash at the same time. Yeah, my new, my new overlay actually has an upload thing, uh, which makes adding the images super easy. Um but it needs it needs a lot more work before it's ready to be used. So. Okay, so that that looked fine. Um, but what we need to do now is we need to make it so um, when the second wave spawns, they spawn with. <laughs> Why have I gone grey? I ask myself that every day. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. I've, I've shaved most of mine mine off uh, the other day. That was another thing about uh, being ill. When you've got a big beard and scruffy hair, you just feel even worse. So, as soon as I felt up to it, I just, um, um, I, I just, I just started um, shaving it off and felt much better. Uh, but my my beard is like super grey. I don't have it really have any hair up here. I have a little bit around the sides, but um, it's not that grey. There's bits of grey in it, but it's not that grey. But my beard is just like it's like snow. It's, it's becoming whiter and whiter every time I shave, and it grows back. So, um, but I'm hoping, and this is this. See, I think about the stream. You see, I'm hoping um, that by the time Christmas comes around, that it will be just about long enough again, so that when I put my Santa on, hand Santa out on, on again, I will, I will look a bit Father Christmassy. I had to have it. I had to have it shaved. I couldn't let it grow any longer. I'm hoping in five weeks it should have kind of reached the right length again. Yeah, look, it's when I shoot these barrels for some reason. Interesting. No idea why. Okay, yeah, so there's, there is like a weird, for some reason I flash few times I flash that color okay so we need this second yeah did it again then okay well we need to figure that out anyway <laughs> really <laughs> thank you thanks Tron <laughs> um can we play Christmas Sid you can play you you've never not been able to play Christmas Sids it's just um it's it's just when it's the middle of July. It's really not what I want. What I want to hear, but I'm not. I'm never going to stop you doing it. So. Oh yeah, I, I assumed you meant because of illness. I hope I don't look like Stimpy most times. Okay. Um. Okay, so when the entities have finished spawning, then a new one, a new set should spawn. So, so we can see here when the spawn count count gets down to zero, um, we jump to the spawn routine, um, which I don't remember where that is, but we can find it here. It is, um, and this sets the spawn timer. Um, oh, is it actually does it not reset the? Wait, hang on, let's have a look. What did we have? We had spawn timers here. Oh, we do set it here. So we do set the spawn timer again at this point. 
and they do seem to stagger appear this second. They, let me just double check that. I think they do stagger appear. It's just for some reason the sprites aren't appearing. So, so they definitely stagger appear on the first attempt. Right, let's watch. Yeah, they they definitely stagger appear. So, they just haven't got sprites appearing on them. Okay, that's fine. That just means what we need to do is figure out why they're not doing that. So when we draw a sprite, what do we do? Well, we, we take... Uh, where, do, where do we get the sprite number from? We're not removing the sprites properly. Maybe we're not removing the sprite properly. I thought this was enough to remove the sprite properly. Let me just have a check in the multiplexer code. Under get next sprite, because we did make some changes to this. It could be down to this, so. Yeah, so the frame should be set to zero, which it is. So we do set the frame to zero, uh, which should be enough to allow us to spawn another sprite in. So it just seems like this is not happening again. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a, an increment border in here. So it's, we should see the border flash um, when that sprite should be being drawn. The beard is back here. Yeah. But see, look, look, look how different the color of the beard is. I mean, I know that's that, that image is tinted, but um, the beard color has changed a lot even just this year. So... There we go. So you can see the border flashing to indicate that the sprite should be shown. Then it stops because now the sprites are all over. And then it should start flashing again when these are dead. Which it does, but they're not showing. So there must be some setting that we're missing somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the uh, the debugger, which hopefully is going to load straight in. No, it doesn't. All right, it's fine. Because this will hopefully allow me to uh, see um, if the actual sprites are on the screen at this point. So we can use this this panel down here to see where the sprites are. So it's a bit kind of flashy and such. It might make it a bit hard to shoot everything as well because of the way that the, the shoot works. Counter. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah, sprites aren't appearing the second time. That's why. Is the triangle triangles to draw the counter to draw reset? I don't know. Let's have let's have a look. I mean, it's getting into this routine, so it should be showing. But it seems to be that the uh, the next free sprite here is failing for some reason. So let's just have a look. Um, what would be happening when we come in here? So let's just do some, another quick test because I'm not sure what you mean. This spawn count here, um, the spawn counts at zero at this point anyway. Um, so let's come into here because this would imply that they're they're failing. This would imply that they're not failing. So let's see if that makes a difference. 260 in one night. <laughs> I don't know why you're desperate. You're miles ahead. It's a bit of a glitch there. It seemed to not... Um... Oh. What? Turn that off a sec. I feel like the multiplex is misbehaving. I think that's what it is. Uh, 
Oddly enough, I listen to Shallon and watch him work. Uh, uh, hey, Andira, welcome. So it's just 1 a.m. K point. Um, hmm. Oops. So why... So I don't understand. It seems to be trying to do this, but then failing miserably for some reason. Um, and the only time it should ever get into here is if the spawn timer is still going. Then it should come in here and, and successfully complete this. X and Y are passed in. They're not changed. That You can see they're being used there. Um, so it goes through the entities. The entities have been added again. Only if the type is... Well, we know it's, we know it's doing that because it is flashing. So I need to, I need to check the behavior a few times since I'm not quite... I'm not quite figuring out what it's doing, so reset countdown on each enemy. Yeah, it should be it should be reset because it's um for the an for the enemies to spawn in staggered like they do, as you'll see in a minute. Um they must be they must be um resetting the counter. Yeah, they don't all spawn at the same time. So the the counter itself is working. <laughs> okay. Um Oh. There, yeah, there's something funky going on with sprites. Look, there's a sprite up here now. Uh, what have I done that would break the sprites here? Get next next free sprite. So that should be ah. Wait a minute. Where does that return? Oh, that returns it in the accumulator. Wait a wait a minute. Hang on. Wait a minute. Okay. We need to reset this. It's not the counter. It's the actual spawn sprite value. So um, that needs to be done in here. And that value needs to be zero. Because what that's doing is saying, have we already found a sprite? Have we already worked a sprite out where we need to uh, put some stuff? So, pretty sure that the new enemies shouldn't spawn until the twinkies from the previous wave have gone. Okay, cool. Well, we can we can um, we can change that. That's quite easy to do. Uh, or is it actually? Yeah, we can just uh, we can just make sure that a wave won't spawn if there's any it uh, active items on the screen. This should be easy enough, easy enough to do. But now I just need them to bloody work. That's the problem. No, they're just appearing again, though. Um, okay, so is this being called? So let's put a let's put an increment in here. Should be being called because we're resetting this value here. So the next time it comes in, it, it this will fail and it means it has to go and fetch one. And the multiplexer will always return that value in... Actually, it returns it in the accumulator, but um, we, we transfer it to the Y register anyway at this point. Um, this is payment for last week, so... 
no user oh they do appear just straight away okay well it would have been easy enough to do anyway we can we can always there might have to there, there still might have to be some kind of commodore specific balancing anyway because the the game is meant to be played on a much wider screen so I mean, it could be that we need to make a few changes here and there anyway. Oh. Did that just work? I think that just worked. Worked once and then failed. All right. Why would that only increment once? It should increment more. Oh, it's not. It's incrementing several times okay sorry I'm just gonna keep playing this bit until I figure out what's going on I thought excrement was oh my god seems to work when I become great oh, that's maybe we need to fix that bug first then yeah they there's still something wrong because they're appearing Well, I'm grey now. Let's let's uh, let's come back to this in a second. Let's try and fix the grey thing. So um, let's just open it up in the debugger. Now, hopefully. Um, can just do this. I think it's like a really light gray, isn't it? So I'm going to try zero F. Um, problem is this is oh, but this isn't color RAM, so it will be zero F. It's not um, the the upper bytes going to be zero. If this was color RAM, then this wouldn't work. We'd have to do uh, something a bit more convoluted than this, right? There we go. Oh, but I've gone grey and it's not happened. So let's see what colour has it actually set me. Uh, yeah, it set me to zero F. Let me just check that in here. It's not grey, that's white. But it doesn't look white. Is it just flashing really quickly between grey and white, maybe? No, it can't be that. Something's... Oh, because it's not that sprite, it's this one. D zero two E. All right, it's I forgot I've done them in reverse order. Okay, so uh, and it does set the upper byte to. Um, oh, it's changing it every frame. Look, it doesn't matter what I type in there; it's changing it. Okay, cool. Right, so something is set in the multiplayer color, which means this is probably doing something wrong. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, in that case. Um, Let's just have a look. Could it be that we're resetting the, the counter back to zero? Uh, when we get back, right? no, first free sprite should be. Yeah, let me check the multiplexer values as well. So these values here are what's causing the problem. And I'm guessing this color field here. Um, Is what's the issue? Something's setting that value in there. What's that background? It's, what's the, what's the background called? Oh, I see it there. Cover story. Okay. Um, 
it sort of seems to happen. We have we have a week or two of good kind of successful work and then and then shit like this happens. Okay, five thousand and two. All right, let me check it in here, sir. So. Just wanted to see where it was in memory. Okay, so this is the list of colors here. Um, and this is the player here. So if I set that to red, oh, actually, the player is not, the player is gray already. What? Wait, it doesn't look grey up there, though. That's the weird thing. Is it just me being blind? Because it's white there. I think it's the invulnerability. I think that's what it is. So we'll 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 check that. Um, Herosa, thank you very or Herose Heresy. Yeah, I quite like that name. Uh, hello, thank you for the raid. Welcome along, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Thank you very much. Cheers. Have have a nice cider. Uh, what have you been developing tonight? Won't be when we're testing invulnerability. Yeah, let's uh, let's check that out. Uh, for those who haven't been here before, um, what cider? This is a uh, Copperberg cherry. Uh, it's quite nice. So for those who haven't been here before, I'm Shannon 50K. I do uh, retro coding uh, in assembly. Uh, tonight we're working on a C64 title um, called Checkanoid, uh, which is a port of a um, a release that came out on Steam and Switch and mobile um, over the past two or three years in various various times over that time. We're trying to do a fairly accurate port. Um, uh, because the game itself was based on a, on uh, the old Cybernoid games uh, by Ralph Checo. Um, so we're just kind of, um, you know, the, the style is very retro anyway, so it's, gonna, it's quite easy for us to port. Um, so, yeah. But yeah, welcome along, everybody. I hope, uh, hope you enjoy that. I hope you had a good uh, good stream tonight, Herosa. Heresy. I don't know how to say that name. Is it Heresy or Hero Herosa? I'm not sure. Thank you for the follow biting bits as well. Like that name as well. That's cool. My local computer shop when I was growing up was called Bits and Bytes. Spelt as in computer bits and bytes, obviously. Um and I loved it. It was great going in there and, and spending my pocket money on dizzy games and stuff, so it's great fun. Alright, let's see where this invulnerability is. So uh layer is Oh, that was a loud one. I'm getting the echo of the the things as well. They all were, yeah. It wouldn't surprise me, actually. People do like to... There's something about making a shop that people seem to think they have to have a pun name for some reason. Um, like the Codfather for a fish and chip shop or a Cutterbub for a, um, a hairdresser's, that sort of thing. Curl up and die. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a local kind of I think it delivers like medicines to pharmacies and stuff. It's like it's something something medical and it's the the acronym is A A H. It's like ah medical. It's it's kind of funny. It always makes me laugh. Why can't I find that? Why is that not found? It? What am I doing? I'm doing wrong. It's invincible. I'm just pressing the wrong buttons. I know my brain's not working properly. Uh, flash speed. Okay, so all we're doing there is we're just changing the frame. So we're changing between an empty frame and a full frame. So we're not actually changing the color there. 
Um, and certainly don't see any color change here at the moment. So let's just let's just check first of all our memory location. So it's saying these are our these are our sprites here. Um, it's probably sixteen. I can't remember exactly how many we've got set up. Maximum, I think it's probably sixteen. So let's let's try setting um, uh, five thousand and three to three like that, uh, and then go. Uh, yeah, so we can see the sign. So 5,003 is the value um, that changes that. And let's just load it in the debugger so we can see it again and confirm it in here. While that's loading, let's just see. Do I? Yeah, see, something makes me flash red and then go gray. Um, and then I actually see the value FF in there. So something is storing FF in the wrong place. Um, so we'll find out where that's happening. That should be pretty easy to do in here. So It shouldn't write colors though. It should never really be writing colors. Um, But yeah, it could be something to do with the explosions. Maybe it's maybe it's the previous block here. So maybe it's the uh the Y positions that, that leak over into the thing. So it could be that the for some reason the the, the plex and number that we're getting leaks over and that would explain why we'd see FF as well. Uh because we do reset those values with FF, so it happens when something explodes, yeah. Yeah, I think you might be right. I think it, it probably is related to that. Um, but let's find out exactly where that is. Let's open up the... Uh, well, I like this one. This is that raster line, isn't it? Okay, so if I go to 5003, which is this value here, and I set it to 03, you can see return cyan. Right, so, um, so we know that's the right address. So let's put a breakpoint in here. And we're looking for this being changed to FF. And now we just wait and we shoot some stuff. And there we go. Okay, so this is a three. Oh, I've got no labels on a 3A77. All right, it's fine. I can find it in here. It'd be fairly easy to recognize once I know where the block code is. 3A77. So that is in. You're right, it's in the explosions. Ooh, some points there, I think. A prince phase. Wait, hang on, because SP said something, so it might be testing invulnerability. Okay, no, I don't think it's invulnerability. I think it's the explosion. But I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to give points out until I know for sure, until I fix the problem. So the problem seems to be when the explosion goes off, it's using... Um, I, I think it's to do with this get next. I think it's this, because we did change this. I think this isn't working properly. So what is this actually doing? So this is uh, checking through the sprites. Um, and it tries to find a free sprite. So it checks the frame number. If the frame is zero, uh, then it goes back here and it gets the next sprite. So um, so let's have a look how it does that. So it sets a counter to zero, grabs the next free sprite value, which is this value. Uh, actually, where is it? Oh, I think it might be in zero page. So it grabs that value from zero page, increments it, compares it to the maximum, compares it to the variable maximum. So it compares it to this Vmax. So the variable maximum is the one that we can set um, based on um, performance for the screen. If it's not equal to that value, then it goes to here. If it is equal to that value, then we go to... Oh, maybe this should actually be that rather than not equal, just to make sure that that same problem of checking equality rather than checking if it's equal or above. Because if it's above, then it also should be wrong. And that might stop it from leaking over for some reason. 
Um, actually, that might be enough. Uh, load the first free sprite. And then, yeah, so first free sprite is the value in our constants, which defines where the first sprite in memory that is part of the um, the multiplexer, because a few of the sprites aren't used. So the, the player, the uh, mask sprite, and the, the mace are not used. Uh, in the multiplexes, so there has to be there has to be a number which defines where the ones that you can start using are. And I'm not seeing it in here, but it should be in here. Uh, first free sprite, there it is. First free sprite, zero four. So actually, it's four four reserved sprites in the multiplexer. I think that should be three, really, but um, I'm not going to change that now. And then that stores that, and then it increments the Y counter. So the reason we count the Y is to make sure. If we've looped around and we've checked every single sprite already, then we just um, automatically um, we automatically exit at that point. Um, at which point we just use whichever sprite we, we we're on, and that becomes the one. Um, otherwise, we grab. Otherwise, we check the frame of that current sprite and and, and carry on. So, okay. So I, I think that might be enough to fix it. I think that might be enough. The white would be adding more than one at a time or something, I don't know, but it could be to do with the performance updates or something changing the the value. But, um, is it not loading there? Yeah. Here we go. Unfortunately, I don't think this. Oh, actually, no. It might have a positive effect on the, on the rest of it as well. No, see, it's still still doing the same thing. Okay, so let's have a think about the explosion. So, what does the explosion do? What's confusing is is the the frame being set to FF fails. So, there must be something in the explosion that uh, that we're doing wrong. But at least we know where it's happening now. So this is what happens. Um, sorry, not frame, YPOS. Oh, actually, what is the first thing in here? What is the bit before it? Is it YPOS? It is YPOS. All right, so this is where the YPOS is being set here, and I reckon that's going to match where we're seeing it in here. So, yeah, we're seeing... Uh, you see in frame and we're seeing that and then we've got a branch you know, yeah okay so so this is the area but for some reason this y value is incorrect and i think it's probably because when this update happens the y value is expected to be correct at that point and maybe it's not so let's find out where that's been called from it's not being called in there Wait, where is that Y? That Y should be coming from somewhere, and it's not. Yeah, this... The Y seems to not be there. That's weird. I would have thought that was this here, sprite index. So when we add a sprite, it gets added to the sprite index here. The value gets added to the sprite index. So then when we go through them, the Y register should be that sprite index. Oh, no, it is. There it is. Okay, so it is being done. this working right Just leads me back to this get next sprite that's the thing uh, really is all pointing back to this get next free sprite isn't it get next free sprite oh he's going to return in the accumulator is that a problem in here 
Oh. Yes, there's the problem. There's the problem. Okay, so I need to check I need to check all of these. Let me just double check. Yeah, store X transfer X to the Akeem. Yeah, so it's been stored in the Akeem there. So I think we were making the assumption that it was stored in the X register. Uh which it wasn't. You can see it's been used here, it's been used here. Uh it's not been used there. It's Okay, we can just it's quick, so there's not that many uses of it, so that's good. Okay. And we're transferring to the accumulator in this case, so that can just be removed. It's good, save as a byte in two cycles, so that's not a bad thing. Uh doesn't look like it's been used on that one. No, it is being used, there is. And the reason I'm changing this is because I think in the Robotron thing we need the X and Y to remain, so Yeah, so that's correct there. Which would this would also have a knock on effect on um oh what's this one? Transfer Y. I see there you go, we've got in the accumulator. So at this time we need to do transfer accumulator to X. Uh Uh, it returns in X, not accumulated. Yes, it, originally it did, but when we changed the routine, uh, the value is in the in the X register, and because we were restore storing and restoring the X and Y register, we transfer it to the accumulate. I just I'd forgotten, and we hadn't got round to changing it in here, so I just need to go through and change it through these. Um, So X to my A macro attempt. Yep, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, screen macros, that's the one that's done. Oh. Why does this get an X3 sprite and then. Don't know why that's on its own like that. That's weird. Uh, we'll come back to that. It's to do with the laser screen. I'm going to have to go to the toilet. I'm going to have a quick break in a minute. Uh, let me just make sure this is working now. And then one for the swarm, which again uses that. So actually, we're, we're saving some, some bytes by doing that. Bytes, a few bytes and a few cycles every time. Um, it would have also possibly been the cause of a of a crash. Oh, does this, is it commented saying it does that? Thank you. I'll give you some points as well before I go because I think you were uh, you correctly identified it was in the uh, the explosion was the was uh, caught the, the 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 writing of the color from the explosion was causing it, even though it's actually the multiplex. Well, actually, no, the the, the code was wrong in the explosion because it was yeah, this is looking fine there. So I'll give you five points for that. It's fine. So hopefully now we should get these every time now because now that the the sprite count is counting properly. Sweet. And there was this is the callback. So when you've killed them all, that's the callback. Right, cool. I'm gonna add some points to Nicomo for that. That's pretty good. Um it was either it was either gonna be that or it was gonna be the invulnerable invincibility. So it was a little competition between SP and Nicomo then to see which one was right, I think. Um But there you go, five more points for you. Right, I'm gonna take a quick break because I need to really go and like heavily blow my nose and I'm not gonna do that on stream and I need the toilet. Um, so give me give me five minutes. I'll be as quick as I can. I shall leave you with the quizzes and stuff. So I'll be right back, guys. Be right back. Right, I'm back. <laughs> Hang on. Let me move the mic. <coughs> oh, my God. Right. I think it's I receive all time again. <laughs> Mm. 
or seat well downed with cider. And I got another cider. I can just hold in my throat a little bit. Too. Oh, that's nice, actually. Ah, just do this for a second. Ah. Ah, there we go. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Where were we at? Are we sure should be? I'm fine. I'm fine. I was I was missing streaming. It was kind of bugging me a bit. Uh, it needed to be done. It's only a short one anyway. Streaming out of my nose. Actually, I've, I've got sore on the side of my nose because I was blowing so hard and wiping my nose so much. It's gone sore on the side of my nose. Just really not happy with. It's this this pain in my side that's the worst. So like every time I cough or sneeze. It feels like something's going to burst out the side of my chest. It's horrible. Absolutely horrible. Just get better at things in general. Yeah, next time I sneeze, I'll, I'll put my nostrils right up to the camera. <laughs> okay, cool. Right, so we, we know that's working there. So this is a really good opportunity now to actually really test the dynamic code loading. Um, so... With the Robotron screen, what happens? Let's go and have a look at the this code loading actually for the Robotron. So let me close all the other tabs. So I can't remember what screen number it is now. It is screen not on the screen. It's screen 20. All right. So if we go and have a look at screen 20 code, you'll see how it initializes and how it runs. And there's one other thing that happens at the end of this screen. Um that is only really going to happen on this screen. So I don't want to put this code anywhere else. Um, I don't want to add it into the Robotron code and I don't want to load it at the same time as the Robotron code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a dynamic loader to load it after the Robotron screen has been completed. Um, so let me just show you the code. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let me find where it is now. I forgot where it is. Here we go. Maps, screens, screen 20. So this is what happens when screen 20 initializes. Uh, the interrupts are disabled and it loads in um, screen 20 code and the Robotron code from here. So it loads in this, this piece of code here and it loads in this piece of code as well. Now, these files load in at two, two specific locations. Dynamic screen code loads in A1000 and Robotron, uh, any other code, any other dynamic code that loads in, loads in A800. So when the Robotron screen is finished, this is no longer required anymore. This this can, once the, um, once the callback is fired, we no longer need to do anything. We can, we, can, uh, we can stop running this code. In fact, the only reason this code runs is because in, uh, is it this one here? In the dynamic code, in the update, uh, we call this Robotron update here. If we don't call this, then nothing in this file will get get actioned at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to create um, a new piece of code that's going to be loaded in at the same location, and it's going to replace this code. So when the callback happens, when this happens here, we're going to load in a new piece of code at A800, and that code is going to spawn the little um, a bonus chest. It's going to animate it down to the bottom of the screen uh, with some stars kind of coming out of it as well. Um, it's a crypto coin miner and demo effect. <laughs> um, only one sure entry. Have we got an entry? I don't know if we've got an entry for... I, I don't know of anybody making demos. I know we've got... I know of at least one Christmas game competition, but I don't know of any demos uh, uh, entries, so... Yeah. That's every time I sneeze. Oh, my God. <laughs> I like that. It's good. Oh, one person... Oh, I missed the poll, so... Okay, that's cool, then. 
Well, at least we get one one demo. <laughs> Better than none, right? I just hope it's somebody who hasn't already won a a, um, a Mega sixty five board because otherwise, otherwise there's no you know nobody can win one twice. You see, so I hope it's somebody somebody new. So I say vodka helps with the car. I'll definitely be drinking vodka this weekend. Uh, they were the only ones that can code. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, I mean it, it makes my life a bit easier for me, but um, I do want to kind of build these things ahead of time a little bit. So, all right, so let, let's let's try doing that then. So, what we're going to do, we're going to set a flag in here. So, we'll, we'll create a flag. Uh, it doesn't really matter where it is in here because. Um, Oh, actually, how does it work in here? We go jump. Oh, yeah, we jump to that location. Okay, so we can have another flag in here, so we can say uh, Robotron complete, and we start that with a byte of zero. And then when we do, uh, so we do the init, that's fine, and we do the start Robotron, that's fine, and then this is this update is always happening. Um, and when the update happens, uh, oh, we've got this screen view. Oh, we might need to check this if you go back into the screen, it doesn't trigger again. But <coughs> so maybe some maybe sixty five demo only can run into one mega demo. Yeah, it's uh, it should be a it should be a quite uh interesting, um, interesting challenge. So. Um, yeah, the idea is is uh, using all the knowledge we've kind of learned over the year and all the practice everybody's had. Uh, you've got some kind of small kind of li minor limitations of where you can load load things in, uh, but you basically um, I'll have a kind of um, uh, a kind of I wouldn't really call it a linker. It's not really a linker. It's more like a. Uh, uh, it's, it's just kind of loads. I don't know what you'd call it. It loads. It loads one part of a demo in. Then when that demo is complete, it returns the execution back to my code, which then loads the next piece of the demo in, uh, and and so on and so on and so on. Um, and the idea is everybody supplies one bit. You can do whatever the hell you want. The only thing you have to do is you have to call a music routine uh, at a particular location in memory, so the same piece of music plays for for all of the all of the demos. Um, and yeah, we're just going to combine them all all together. Um, but yeah, there's uh, two weeks I think left on that, or just just short of two weeks. Um, um, so yeah, and it's uh, it's not really a competition. It's more of a just like anybody who takes part gets entered into the draw with the chance of winning, um, winning the uh, the, the Mega sixty five board, which comes in one of these cases. That would be printed a lot better because um, I had some serious issues trying to print that. Um, this last two weeks it took me ages to print it. I had to print like three or four different versions of it and about ten different switches to get it right. Um, okay, so uh, this is what we need to do here. We just need to check this because this routine is going to get called every frame. I'm going to leave this here actually because I have a feeling we're going to need this code at some point. I don't know why it's disabled. Um. So basically, if that flag has been set, so we need to make sure it's reset at the beginning. It should be because this is loaded in dynamically, but I'm going to reset it anyway just to make absolutely sure. Um, I can't think of any reason why it wouldn't already be set because it's loaded from ROM anyway. So, uh, But as soon as this, this is loaded from ROM as well, this piece of code, then uh, it makes no sense to uh, worry too much about space because... We've got uh, two kilobytes to mess with, uh, which is plenty, plenty of space for this. There's no graphics or anything in this portion. So, um, okay. So then, all we need to do here is we just need to skip this update. So, if the Robotron is complete, so there we go. 
So it's just going to make sure that this doesn't fire if if we're um, if we're in that state. So that's good. Everything else will work the same. So doors update has to happen every frame because we need to open the door as well at some point. Um, uh, yeah, it has to use a mega sixty five feature. I mean, well, no, it, it. I mean, I it doesn't really have to use a a, a mega sixty five feature. But I mean, obviously, it would be better if it did. I mean, it's not much point if it's uh if it's not, it's not like, um, I, I just want to put something together that, that the idea of this one is, um, much like we've done with the games is to create something that we can share with the community. Um, but for the first time, something that's everybody's collaborated on. So, which is what I'm hoping we can do. So, I mean, if, if if we don't get any entries, then, you know, fine, that's fine. Flash the screen in 80 color mode. <laughs> uh, okay. Right, um, okay, right. So what we want to do now is we want to dynamically load that piece of code in. So first of all, we need to add that piece of code to our loader uh, to make sure that it's added to the cart. Uh, so if we go and have a look at the main, is it the main file or is it cart file? I think it is, isn't it? This is where all our dynamic uh, code is loaded. And you can see all our dynamic code loaded in at A800. So we just need another one of these like this. We'll call this um, Robo Prize, we'll call it, because that's what it kind of is. Um, this may be used on more than one screen. I think it's only actually used on this one screen, though. Um, but, it, I mean, it doesn't matter if we just load it in like this. It should be fine. Okay, so we've created the, the file to add to the thing. So now we need to actually create a file. Um, I'm just going to put it in the game section for now. New file. Let's call it uh, Robo. Actually, how have I been labeling everything in here? But I've been using capitals, haven't I? I hate that way. Wait, now I've gone right off that. Oh, actually, this is just for the damn it. Uh, so this actually needs to be. I need to copy this kind of format. All right, so it's like that, and then at the end, like that, and then. I need that to force the um actually that doesn't need to be there really to force the p uh, the program counter to 800 and then i can put the the label in here like that so robo prize so this is where our robo prize starts um just check that's right at the end as well i think it is i'm just pretty sure it's just an end marker yeah it is okay um I will copy that in as well because this is a useful piece of code just to have in there. Uh, it says more than AFFF, but I'm pretty sure we're not using B001 once anyway, unless we're using it for some kind of graphical data or something. So let me just have a look in the in here. I just want to see if that gets written to that area because I'm pretty sure it doesn't, but. Um, it seems to be indicating that we we do need it. So where is B? Okay, so that's this location here. So kind of this block here. So let's just have a look what happens. When the game loads. Obviously, it's flashing in the basic ROM there. Okay, so it just seemed to be just left the same. It doesn't seem to have changed anything. Yeah, I think I think that's probably it's an abundance of caution, I think that, but I think we can probably extend past that if we need to. And looking at uh Robotron car, it's actually right close to the end. So another reason we should probably um unload this code anyway. Uh just wondering there's probably some stuff in here that can be removed to to shrink it down a little bit as well. Because there were some, I saw some tables and stuff. Oh no, they need to be in there, don't they? Okay. There's these 
bits of data as well. I mean, it's it's not a huge issue for now. Robotron Charles there. Let's get rid of that. Don't need that. Uh, if it becomes an issue, we can look into it. I'm pretty sure there's nothing stored there. I should really have the memory map written down somewhere. And then when I'm doing stuff that I haven't touched for a year, I remember where the hell it is. So, uh, but for now, we'll just we'll just assume that that is the end, and we just have to be careful if we add anything to this. But I don't think we need to add anything else to this just yet. So, um, okay, right. Um, okay, so now we've got the robo price. So now what we need to do is we need to dynamically load that in. So let's have a look at the uh, the way we do that. So it's quite simple. Um, we um so it disable the interrupts we load the the file in clear the interrupts uh and then jump to the initialization so we can do that in our thing here uh we don't need to load any new screen data in we're just loading in this one new file uh which is this one here oops why has it done that steep is that but i've got yeah i thought so So we're loading in the uh, dynamic car, and then we'll jump to roboprize.init. Uh, and so again, it's a tail call. So the, the callback comes to this this function, um, and it's expecting uh, a return at this point. Uh, New feature in Sublime is your print button is back. What? What print button? Well, oh, I didn't even, I'd never even used it, so. Uh, doesn't the Robotron screen now overwrite itself? Or is the incomplete? No, the yarn complete function is in the screen data. So the Robotron. The Robotron file is is separate. So the Robotron, this is why we have a callback. We have a callback because we the Robotron screen could be used in several places and we don't know where it needs to call back. It needs to do different things when it's finished. So all we're doing is we're saying, okay, at this point, in fact, we also who want to increment uh, Robotron complete. We just need to make sure that value is non-zero again. Um, uh, so this is this should just replace it. So what we'll do is just we, we'll know this is working because what I'll be able to do here is is that oh I need to put it in it, in it don't I? If it's worked, we should get the same effect, but it will have done happen through uh, dynamic code loading. We should be very quick because this file is going to be very small, but. Uh, Oh god. Let's get this side of damage so I can open up another one. Make a static image and call the demo ST scroll demo. It doesn't need to be a static image, it just needs to be it needs to be a scroll that moves about sixty-four pixels at a time, once every five seconds or something like that. And then it'd be pretty accurate. Uh, I'm enjoying that actually. I'm not outside for a while. It's nice. 16 pixels. <laughs> Ooh. Some quality scrolling. Um, <laughs> I wonder if you can type. I bet you can't type me out though. Doesn't matter if you can anyway. I never type, so. No, you, you you sound very confident about that. Have you tried that? Hey, hey. <laughs> Can't time out mods or above. Yeah, with a certain person. <laughs> oh, I 
think I know what you mean. Five minutes of be right back screen. <laughs> okay, so let's give this a try. So if this works, we should um, we should still see the border flash when the Robotron screen is complete. Um, but it will have worked because we've now loaded in new code dynamic, which is quite nice. That's a really nice feature to be able to do, uh, which means we won't need to worry too much about memory usage as long as the module that's currently loaded can be completely shut down and replaced um then we're okay if something's gone wrong though here uh yeah, it's unknown overpriced oh i haven't included it that's why why that another why what, what? It's weird i don't know why that was there like that but I think when I was opening different windows, it decided to do some strange stuff. Dynamic and that one as well. There we go. Okay. Uh, so in here, I need to import it. Uh, now, I've not been importing them in here. Where have I been importing them? Mm, has it been imported in the game loader, maybe, or the game loop? No, game loop. Where's the loader? Loader. Oh, yeah. It's in. Mm. Wait, no, that's... Been important. It's going to be somewhere weird, isn't it? It's going to be like map, map loader. No, that's the actual map screens. Dynamic, yep. I guess I have to go and look for that file, don't I? Uh, Robotron day set. All right. Oh, it is loaded in here. Oh, yeah, it's there. Damn it. All right. <laughs> oh, how have you not all got that this this series by now? That's amazing. I I I was sure you would have got all of these by now. Okay, so we should be able to go in here, should be able to play this through normally. Shit. Damn, that's actually tricky. And there we go. So now we've got the, the rolling border, so we know we know it's working correctly. Okay, cool. So that means we can dynamically load code in. And so the only thing I need to check there, um, which I'll check when we come to doing the, the final kind of test in this, is that there's no places where the music stutters as we as we change. One frame drop here and there is fine, but if it drops like five frames of music, then it's gonna be it's gonna be weird. Um reduce Robotrons to one for test, and that's a really good idea, actually. Um so that is again that's set up in here. Um Should just be able to do actually. Let's... Should be able to do that, and let's just check that. It should just make one single Robotron. Yeah, confidence, paranoia. Yeah. Craig Ferguson, wasn't it? So I think it was you guys that told me that as well. And I was amazed because he was he's somebody I really like his or liked his talk show. He's been replaced by James Corden. I mean, it makes no sense. If you really if you if you're ever bored and looking for something something funny to watch, I definitely recommend watching Craig Ferguson's 
uh, talk show uh, interviews on um, on YouTube. The, he's, he's an amazing interviewer. He's very very good. Uh, just he doesn't um, he doesn't just read you know pre uh, scripted questions. He just has a chat with him. He just has a proper chat with him. With his robot, yes. Is it Grand Nahara that did the uh, did the robot? Didn't know that. Makes sense actually. Looking at it, oh God bless. Um, love that you can change this. And yeah, it's. Got, I think the the Robotron the the way the Robotron setups is is really nice actually. I'm, I'm glad we did it like this. And the reason it's done like this is because there is a Robotron screen later on where there are all sorts of things spawning on there. So it is going to get more complicated. So this will have to be um, optimized to fit into memory if it if it is limited to B00. I think it goes up to B800, though. I think we've got another, uh, another 2K on top of this 2K as well. And we can always bring this down a, a bit as well if we if we really, really want to. Uh, there's nothing saying it has to be, always has to be in this location uh, because it's always spawned from the screen code. So uh, technically, you could just have it at the end of the screen code and it would work. So we can always shift things around. The, the The whole point of this was, and this is why it's taken so long to get to this point, is to try and make a lot of this as flexible as possible. So that all I'm really doing eventually is just getting to a screen like we're doing now, right? We get to, we've got to the Robotron screen. And we're just writing code to make that screen work. And it's almost like each screen is its own standalone program. Because um, you could quite easily get into the, uh, fall into the trap of trying to fit ev or everything that's going on, trying to fit it all into memory at the same time. And that that is going to be a nightmare. So even from the very first kind of uh, design principles of it, the the fact that we were not limited to a, a font set of 256 byte, uh, 256 characters. We can have as many characters as we want, I, uh, really. Uh, I've actually put a, a, a kind of soft limit on a 512, but that's plenty for uh, for what we need to do. And as long as you never display more than 128 on any one screen, you can tip pick any 128 you want from that set of 512 and display that when you go into the next screen and it automatically updates. And that allowed us to do things like scrolling the screen, uh, which you wouldn't have been able to do had you kind of um, tried to do it in, in, in any other way. You would have had to... Um, you would have had to load in a new font set each time, and then that meant you couldn't have the old screen showing while the new one was loading in. So you would have just had to do flick screen. So the scroll screen is is a nice result of that. Uh, but also the fact that we can just kind of dynamically change performance on each screen. We can set the sprite limits and the, the particle limits and stuff. So it's good. Uh, I like it. I'm, I'm very, very pleased that this has worked out. You prefer flip screen. <laughs> Well, I mean, technically, this is flip screen. It's just flip screen with a nice animation instead of just black new screen, black new screen, or fade out new screen. The good ones will fade out. The good ones will fade out um, the colors on the screen to, and then fade in the colors on the next screen using some kind of color ramp system. Um, but again, even even doing that, the color ramps for that are quite big in memory. They take a lot of space because I wanted to do that on Dot Cosmos on the original one, but I didn't have room to fit it into sixteen K. So um, scrolling is overrated. <laughs> you like the doom effect of the melting screen? Oh yeah, I do like that as well. I was considering trying to find a way to do that on the uh, on the Mega sixty five. It would be pretty easy to do using DMA, I think. Um, is you have like a full screen bitmap? In fact, maybe that's something for the cart racer. Maybe we could do that in the cart racer because that's all drawn onto bitmaps, right? So you could very easily just shift a row of pixels down at, at random speeds, uh, stagger them at different starting points, and, and move them at slightly random speeds. And you could have the whole thing go like, and it would uh, it would work quite well on on that. It wouldn't work so well on. Um, on most things because you'd have to you'd have to copy the screen data into into a buffer somewhere so while you could do it it would be you'd have to take into account master rewrite buffer stuff and it would just get really messy really quickly 
Um, you could do it, technically. You could do it on the on the on this. You could do it on Checkanoid quite easily because it's all one color. So you could quite easily copy all the characters into a bitmap somewhere, but it would be very slow to animate. I, I don't think you'd get the kind of speed that you'd get from the from the Doom effect. But yeah, I, I've I've often thought about that. It's a, it's a nice effect, very nice effect, very simple but very nice. Okay, right. So we've got one Robotron thing on the screen now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, draw a new sprite. So I was thinking about how to do this, and I couldn't really come up with a decent way other than the way I'm going to do it now. So, uh, so what happens in the in the game is when you killed the last Robotron entity on the screen, uh, a little bonus crate appears, uh, and it kind of falls to the ground with a few kind of stars falling out of it, um, and then you can shoot it and and pick it up. So we're going to do a similar effect. We're going to create a sprite or two sprites. It's probably going to be. Um, could be two. I don't know. I have to have a look at the the character set. Uh, we're just going to copy that that uh, exact crate into a sprite or two sprites, um, and we're just going to animate that moving down the screen. And as it moves down the screen, we'll use the other uh, multiplex sprites to just throw some stars around and uh, uh, did a test the Robotron room with the mace. Oh, I haven't actually. No, I'll try that in a minute. Uh, quick question you probably heard a lot. Why do you keep saying Robotron when you're working on Checkanoid? So uh, Checkanoid has a couple of screens which are like Robotron screens. So uh, I'll, I'll show you now, actually, because I do need to test this mace. That's a good good point there, Andy. Might even give you a point for that. If it breaks, if it breaks, I'll give you points. Because if it works, there's not really anything worth, worth checking. But five points. Five points is the minimum. Allegedly, like Robotron, yeah. <laughs> All right, so hopefully I should have the mace now. Uh, they test it with the other power-ups. Do you mean like the extra bullets and stuff? There's still something we need to do with those as well. We've only got... Um, oh, there's a character that's red somewhere because the particles are going over it. There's a few bits like that. I need to I need to check on a few places that do that. It's probably to do with the I'm guessing the explosions when they when things flash. Uh but it's not a huge problem at the moment. I'll come back to that later. Uh, but the mace is working fine in here. It doesn't crash up on the screen anymore. So that's good. Right, okay. So let's try it in here. Hopefully we should just be able to clear everything pretty well. There's only one thing in here now. But it should be able to clear it. Yeah, there we go. And it has cleared. Let me just try it with a few more in so, so I can demonstrate the Robotron, the Robotron like <laughs> uh, part of this screen. So this is what it will look like uh, pretty much in the final version. But yeah, that's that's why I keep saying Robotron. It's because this particular screen is. Um, is is kind of heavily based on that that kind of style of game. Oh god, there's a spider on my wall. Don't like that. Where's that come from? Fucking hate spiders. Uh, an egg. <laughs> oh, it's going to have me paranoid that all night. Use a flamethrower. I will be doing that. Probably that's probably going to be the easiest way to get to actually. Can a deodorant and a liar. Okay, right. So hopefully in here now I should be able to whack all these with this and not get any um multiplex kind of artifact. Oh, I've lost. Oh. Oh, there is a bug. But it's a power-up bug. It's not necessarily to do with the mace, it's to do with losing the power-ups. So if I lose a power up, it should be spawning, but it isn't. Uh, but you can see I still pick them up. I think that's down to the uh, down to the sprite limit. Um, hmm. Hmm. 
me think about this. If I, why is it doing that actually? If it's doing that because the sprites are all being used up, so there's no available sprite, so it doesn't know how to show that power up. Let me try just upping the performance dynamic for that screen. Uh, this is in here, isn't it? So if I, it's already on 15. Why is it on 15? Well, let's just say to 16. Let's just add another sprite into the, into the mix. Let's see what happens. So we've got one, two, three, plus 12 for the thing. Yeah, so it might be enough to do this, but hmm, interesting. So if I just die, I should, yeah, it's not spawning the right sprite either. We need a higher number. It's, it's weird that it's showing the wrong frame as well. Yeah, let's try up in up in the, the the dynamic frames in here. Now, actually, we we've got to be careful because we can't set a value that's higher than our maximum. So we need to just go and have a look what the maximum number of sprites is, which is sixteen as well. <coughs> so let me say it's twenty, and set this to twenty as well. And see what happens. Yeah, I'm going to give you five points, Andy. It's a good point because I wouldn't have thought to to check that at all. So thank you for that. It's worth five points. Okay, so if I just jump into them. No, it's not showing that. It's not showing the power up sprite at all. Okay, so what I want to check now is if I. Okay. Let's turn the power up sprites. Uh, turn the mace off, but set the player's power up to be like that. Like the. Yeah, yeah, the double, double, double shot. I told Andy to say that. <laughs> oh, I totally right. So what I want to do is I want to see what happens if I die. Wait, I've not got double shots at all. Right, let me pick this one up down here. Wait, the power-ups aren't showing at all. Wait, 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 wait. Let me go into... Let me go up here. Oh. Damn, another crash. I thought we got rid of these. All right, I'm I'm I, I'm bleh. okay. Let's start with it from the uh, first screen again. Let's uh, let's try to figure out what's going on here. Uh, oh well. I really want to get onto the other screens. I'm sick of looking at these same screens. Been looking at them for a year. Okay, so right, the normal pickups there they're working. So the score pickups are working. So this should be a speed power up. And nothing is appearing, but that's happening. Okay, so we've got we've got something we need to fix here. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go and have a look at the sprites. Let's see if these sprites are actually loaded in properly. So, uh, can't remember where they are. I think they're at C100 onwards. 
right. Oh, God, which one is it? That's it, yeah, right. So they should be loaded into this area somewhere. I think, actually, they're loaded in, in down here. So uh, it's going to look like um, we're not going to see them straight away because of the, the Vic memory. So what I need to do... Actually, we're not seeing anything. I should see data here. Why am I not seeing data here? I'm the wrong... Is it this bit? Yes, this, isn't it? All right. So this is where the sprites should all be. But at the moment, it's just showing uh, Vic memory. So let me just pause it. Uh, let me just set this to uh, 37. Oops, not 36, 37, please. Wait, no, uh, 30, sorry. Okay, there we go. Right, so you can definitely see the power-ups are there. So you can see all the power-ups... Actually, no, they're not the power ups, is it? That's the, that's the. Uh, there's the power ups. All right, right. Okay, so the power ups are in there. Uh, they're just not showing when we pick stuff up. So let me just restart this uh, completely. Uh, actually, let me restart it fully because I want to load in the the latest version. So the, just to explain why I changed that. So our sprites are loaded in D000. And this is obviously, this is the Vic, Vic chip and the, the, the IO area. Uh, and in the normal course of operation, your IO area is going to be uh, mapped in. Uh, it's very unlikely you're going to be mapping the IO area in and out um, during gameplay. Um, but the cool thing about the Vic, Vic chip is it will whenever it looks at the IO area to, whenever it tries to fetch data, it always sees RAM, it never sees ROM. So if you've got something uh, underneath the IO area, then it will, wow. Uh, thank you uh, V5LI for the, or, or Vesley uh, for the follow. Very much appreciate it. Welcome mm -hmm. to the stream. Cheers, have some, have some cider. I'm drinking cherry cider. Oh, it's this tune again. I love this tune. Yeah, so the Vic will always see the RAM that's underneath the I.O. area. Unfortunately, the, the debugger doesn't see that. Um, so this is why we put sprites there, because it means um, generally you're not going to be editing sprites on the fly during the game. So it's the best place to put it, because it gives you a nice uh, four kilobyte area of memory, um, which normally you wouldn't use for code. You wouldn't use for uh, music. Um, you would just use it for um, for IO area. But if you put sprites there, you can do it with fonts as well, but fonts are more likely to be um, be edited on the fly um, as we're doing with this. Um, so by putting sprites there, you kind of use that area, even though it's mainly used for IO, but the Vic will still see it. So it's a nice fork area to put sprites, uh, which is why I always use that last Vic bank in memory. Uh, thank you much for the uh, for the bits, Nikomo. Appreciate it as ever. So, if you want to see in the debugger what's underneath IO RAM, then you need to change the value in the in the uh, processor port down here, up here, and under zero one. And you see the processor port is currently saying thirty five, and I've gone in to try and edit it, and it's crashed. And this is why you should always pause it when you do it. So. So we restart the game, go into, get to where you want to check where the sprites are. So we're going to go into the game itself. Um, so you can see here, we've just got junk here. And this is because this is our, our Vic registers and they're repeated every uh, 64 bytes. They're just repeated down the screen. That's just the way the Vic works. I can't explain why that happens. I think it's just the way the, the, the PLA maps the, um, uh, maps the memory to the uh, maps the uh, Vic memory to the the actual system memory. So in order to see this, what you have to do is you need to pause the the, the game so that no code is running. Because if you ch if you try and change that value while the game's running, you're going to run into all sorts of problems because you're going to have code that should be running uh, underneath kernel in RAM, um, but now you you map something out and suddenly it's now running. Um, actual kernel code and it's going to be in the wrong place and you're probably going to get jams you're going to get crashes and stuff so pause pause it just go up to here change it to 30 30 will map out 
uh, the IO RAM and it will show you the the uh, the IO area, sorry, and show you the, the, the sprites that are underneath. And then if you scroll down, you can see in the side here, uh, the sprites. This um, this panel on the far right is set to show sprites width worth of data. So as you scroll down uh, every four rows, I think it is, yeah. So there's one sprite. And you see I'm on D2C0. So if I scroll down to the next sprite pointer, D3, 0, and you can see like that. So you can see sprites as you as you scroll down like that. Um, very useful. But yeah, we can see as we scroll down here, we do have power-ups. They are here. Um, so they're definitely loaded in, right? So so the problem isn't that the, the sprites have for some reason been destroyed, right? The sprites are still there because there was a chance, you know, I made some sprites uh, for, the, for the hazard sign things. Um, so there was always a chance that I could have incorrectly exported them and, and somehow missed the, missed the power-ups, but it doesn't seem to be the case there. They're there and everything's fine. So I'm just going to put this back to 37. Uh, or was it 35? I think it was 35, wasn't it? Yeah, 35, obviously. Let me restart. There you go. Um, and you see these are the sound registers, and the sound, the sound registers do the same. I think it's just the way that the, uh, the PLA chip maps the... Uh, the memory addresses to system memory. So you, you've got kind of outputs from the SID chip, uh, like address buses from the SID chip, and I think they're just mapped in a repeating pattern. It's just the way the PLA does it, I think. Uh, but it is interesting because you can you can use those addresses. So instead of writing, uh, uh, you know, load in, increment D020, you could do inc D060, and it will do exactly the same thing. Um, and people will be confused when they read it. So you can always confuse people by doing stuff like that if you want to. Um, take care, Anonym. Thanks for joining. Good luck with the uh, with transmission. Um, okay, right. So let's uh, let's move on to the next place that it could be. So let's take a look at what happens if we spawn an item from this this chest. What actually what actually happens? What what is the uh, Here's our power ups here. So, what is actually going on in here? Is is this ever being triggered? So, I, I would assume that it is being triggered, but I think what might be happening is it might be getting the incorrect kind of frame numbers or something here. Um, it's almost certainly going to be something to do with our multiplexer. I'm I'm pretty sure of that, but um, let's let's find out. So, uh, so let's see if we drop power ups. This is what happens. So let's not do drop power ups. Let's do uh, add power up. Okay. So here we add one. Uh, we do get the next sprite, next free sprite here, and then we store that in sprite index. So this is where I thought there might be a problem, uh, but because we we've changed that, but it seems to be fine. It looks looks like it's doing the right thing. Um, so I guess that means what we now need to do is we need to probably use the debugger uh, and just take a look where the sprite actually appears. So I really like this view as well. This is a really cool view. If you want to learn how uh, Sid Tune is written, just have a go, have a look in here and you can kind of see it uh, almost in, in kind of tracker format. Um, it's very cool anyway. Uh, Okay, so we've got this screen which allows us to see the sprites, right? So I'm just going to drop that there. So we've got a, we can see we've got four sprites on screen now. Sorry, three sprites on screen. And we've got a fourth one down here. This is probably all the sprites, all the other sprites, and they don't have frame numbers. Um, so they're just showing junk at the moment. So let's, um, let's shoot that crate and then we'll pause it uh, and see um, what happens. So. I saw the explosion, but I didn't see the power up. So it's it seems like ah, and then a power up jumps up towards me. So it seems like it's not spawning that power up properly. So there's something about the power ups that seems to have broken at some point. Uh, thanks, Anonym. Uh, take care. It's only our multiplex after you fix it. <laughs> Is it under a split? No, I don't think so. Because uh, the split, because there's only three sprites here, it shouldn't have shouldn't have shown a split. If I put it down here, um, so let me restart. 
it shouldn't be under a split, I don't think, because the the multiplexer will only split once it's drawn enough sprites to know to know it needs to split again. Change it from equal to greater than equal. I did, didn't I? Yeah. I could change it back, but I don't think that should matter. I mean, it should do the same thing. But let's uh, let's change it back because we don't need. I mean, it was it was a it was an experimental fix, and we I don't think we needed that. So, uh, yeah, what's it now? It's in get next free sprite, wasn't it? It was set max get next free sprite. So it's this bit here. So we did. Uh, it was that, but I don't think that would affect it. But let's, I mean, if it does, then great. But I, I couldn't tell you uh, tell you why. So it appears and then moves. So the explosion happens, but it doesn't seem to draw a power up behind it. Um, which makes me think it is to do with this get next free sprite because the get next free sprite should be. Yeah, so it's some, once I get close enough, it knows I'm within range and it moves towards me. Uh, no, that's that's the. Uh, so I'll let me restart again. Uh, it's the uh, explosion. So there's a small explosion that happens. So let me slow it right down. Actually, let me load it up before I slow it down. We get into position and shoot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, damn it. No. Oh, because I put my weapon strength on. Ah. Hang on, let me just fix that a second. Yeah. Really want to get these little bugs sorted and out of the way because the code is kind of so ready now to just build um, the rest of the screens. Six, seven, eight, nine. Right, so one more shot and it'll die. So I'm just going to slow it right down to ten percent now, and you should be able to see as it as it dies. So you see an explosion and and the particles move. But then there's nothing there. But if I move within range, because the 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 position of it is um, is still stored, we're checking against a position, not against the actual sprite. So once we get close enough, it then decides that it's going to move towards us. And at that point, it seems to show something, although it shows the incorrect thing. So um, I couldn't explain why that's happening either. But with this was working not long ago. So uh, I'm inclined to believe it is to do with this, uh, this routine, this multiplexer kind of count routine, if you like. But I mean, I'm not sure why. So let's 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 come from the other angle. Let's let's look at it from the um, from the angle of the power ups being picked up. So uh, rather than the multiplexer adding them in what what happens so not being picked up the adding them to the screen like what happens to to display this so what it should be doing is uh oh there we go it's that it's that simple it was to do with that routine so you changed the return to a did you miss something yeah i did yeah i just exactly i did that because what i was what i did i came back into here uh into this routine and it was um something like this right and and i saw that oh okay it's storing the storing that value in here and then i assumed we didn't need it in the x register so i just deleted that um but it is used in the x register down here as well so it does need to be transfer accumulator to x so actually i'm gonna go back and just check um the other routines just to make sure uh i'm not causing any other problems 
Oh, no, let me test it first. I'm pretty sure it's going to work, but let me test it first. The link for that series is diabetes. What are you on about? Oh, for the... Uh, I was getting confused. And I was like, what, what's, she, what's she saying? I see what you mean, no, no. Okay, so hopefully now, hey, there we go, right. So in theory, this should work with the mace on the other screen. So let's uh, let's do that now. Let's go and check that. Let's go back and set the performance back down to 15 again. I think it should work with 15, um, but let's try it out anyway. Um, I'll leave I'll leave the multiplex sprites at 20. I think we'll be fine because we're making performance tweaks as we go along, which is nice. Uh I just want to check this other screen and then I'm gonna go back and check all those uh multiplexer calls to make sure that the X register is set if it needs to be. Um I don't think it does any other ones. I I, I might be wrong though. Uh so player has mace. Yes. Uh, player weapon strength, no, don't need that. And then I need to in here set that again. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I should read more of the chat than little snippets because I just picked one <laughs> one line out of that. Uh, I thought he was obsessed with masturbation. And now I have no context for that. I don't know what you're on about. And I'm confused and slightly worried. Elogs. Oh, yeah, I've heard that, actually. Where did I hear that? Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Right. Okay. Cool. That's working. <sighs> right. Okay. Uh, so now let's just dial back that screen again to just one. So I don't have to work with, don't have to kill 36. And then let's do a check for this. Uh, it was in Wankers Weekly. Ah, oh, that's where then. Yeah. Do I want context? No, I probably didn't want context, did I? But I, I'm glad the context was good. And I wasn't something horrific. So, okay. So in this case, we don't need it because we're doing uh, we're doing this, which would override the X register anyway. So we don't need it in that one. Um, so why did I pick one in the middle? I oh, know I didn't. I picked one from the top. Is that the one from the top? Yeah. Okay. Uh, power ups we've just fixed. That's fine. Uh, Robotron. I know that works because, yep, that's fine. I, I, Cause that's the one we were trying to make it work with. Um, screen macros. Uh, we did transfer it to the X register here because we know we need it. And then finally the laser, uh, I don't know why it's being called here. I, I'm a bit confused by that one. Um, in fact, I'm going to turn that off because uh, we were getting a crash in that laser screen. So I'm just going to turn that off and hope it never crashes again. Uh, and then swarm, get next three sprites here. Ah, yes, we need it here as well. So like that. Okay, cool. So that would have been a crash in the aura. It would have been some weird behavior in the spawn screen as well. So that's good. Could we check that? All right. Whew. Right. Uh... Oh, it's my side. Oh, there it is. Uh, Hello, brothers invented and marketed cornflakes to prevent the sex. Hmm. 
<laughs> Try, I'm trying to trying to work the logic out there. It doesn't. I can't. I can't think of how that would work. But okay. It's on QI. Oh, that's probably where I'd heard about that. Actually, it's probably, I do remember something about Kellogg, uh, Mr. Kellogg, and and wanking, but I, I I couldn't remember exactly. But yeah, that's probably where I where I'd where I'd heard it. I do get a lot of my facts from QI. That's probably not uh, not ideal, especially when a couple of seasons later they change half of them anyway. Okay, right. Um, okay, cool. So, what do I want to test now? Uh, in fact, I'm going to go for a quick break. Um, so I can clear my throat again. Um, I'll have a think what we're going to do when I come back. So I'll be back in uh, two or three minutes, guys. Be right back. Right, I'm back. PlayStation game. See if I can get this. The PlayStation games are really hard. I don't think I'll get this when it's fully resolved, to be honest. Yeah, not a clue. Some warning. No idea. No idea. <laughs> I like how I like how You've managed to figure that one out, I think. Is that the is that the same series? Yeah, it is the same series as well, isn't it? Oh, SP. So close. So close. Wow, I didn't even know that was a game. Impressive. Um, okay, uh, so what I want to do now is um, this sprite spawn thing. I think actually the laser crash might have been to do with that as well, because I think what was happening um, when it was going into, um, when it was trying to grab the index and it was assuming it was in the X register and it wasn't, so it would have come into the multiplexer and instead of writing into here, it would have probably written into somewhere random like down here or something so the next time it tried to add multiplex sprites in it would have crashed um which would have been on that screen with the laser so i think we've probably got rid of that issue now um but famous last words probably haven't so okay so what do we want to do we want to spawn uh one of those um chests basically but we're going to spawn it as a sprite and we're also going to create some little a little star sprite which we're going to we're just going to kind of throw them up in the air and make them uh, randomly kind of dissipate from it, like a firework going off sort of thing. Um, and we'll do that quite easily. We'll just uh, create a one star sprite and we'll just spawn like eight of them or something like that and make them go off in different directions. Um, it should be pretty easy to do, I think. Uh, and then we need to open the door at the same time. So we'll do the open door in a minute. I'll just get the sprite uh, working. So what I need to do is I need to find the... Uh, that's all the challenges, isn't it? That's not uh, oh, where's my drive? There it is. so many of these now uh i think it's that one it's going to be the most recent one so actually it's i really need to sort this out there's too many i think it's that one looking at this yes because we've got these markers in here so we put these markers in for the, the characters that we're not using so that's good okay so what we need to do now is just find that uh chest there it is well, there's the top half of it anyway. I'll shoot in the bottom half, won't be too far behind. There it is, there's the bottom half as well. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four uh, by two. So we need to use two sprites for this. So we're gonna have two sprites. We're gonna use a 16 by 16 block within the sprites uh, to draw this pattern, basically. 
So let me load the sprites in. Uh, there we go. So we can just start using sprites down here. So we're going to use these two here, and I'm going to use a star here as well. Um, again, these can be, if we start running out of room in here, we can start loading these in dynamically as well. There's no reason that we have to have all the sprites loaded in at the same time. There's definitely a couple of screens later on uh, where we will, there's like one with a big rotating thing, which we're going to have to use the sprite multiplexer to do. Uh, and that's going to be, that's going to be constructed of probably 32, 16 or 32, I think probably 32. Um rotated sprites so that you've got one sprite which you rotate through 32 angles uh, actually it'd be 16 i think um and then you you display it like in in a circle like that with them all joined together so it looks like one big thing that you can just then rotate around um but that's going to have to be done through um dynamic loading because that's way too many sprites to have in there so all right let's uh let's add this in so we want uh to turn multicolor mode off uh, we'll paint in white because why not? Uh, and we just need to basically copy this. So I'm going to do it um, at the top here, start from this top corner. So it'll be a 16 by 16 block here. So in that case, I'm going to start with this piece here. Uh, is that the entire thing? It is showing the entire thing. Okay, right. So just bear with me while I copy this. So it's going to be an eight. There we go. So I was going to put my new water block on my computer uh, at some point, um, but I've just not been, I've not felt up to it. And I thought, well, I'll do it on, I'll do it on the Saturday morning. And I thought, no, because if I, if I take too long for any reason, say I have to re, re bend the pipes or anything like that, um, then it might, it might leak over into the evening and, and then there's a chance I might not have my computer working ready for the stream on Saturday, so I'm not going to do it this, I might do it on Sunday instead. So on Saturday, we'll get back to Mega 65 again. Uh, we've got to try and fix the algorithm for the Cohen Sutherland uh, line clipping stuff. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult. I, I just need to kind of pass some values into it and then um, verify them um, outside of the kind of the normal flow. So we'll just write a small kind of stub program which which loads in some values and then we can read those values in memory using the debugger um that and then that's like that and that's like that okay um and then on tuesday um on tuesday we're probably going to play battlefield so uh, if anybody wants to join me on on tuesday playing battlefield me and sean uh then you're more than welcome to do so uh, we'll get you added into Origin. Um, uh, so, uh, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay, now onto the other side. So, if anybody does want to join in, let me know, and we'll 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 set it up. I mean, we can do more than one squad if we have to, um, but it'd be nice if we can get at least two more people to uh, uh, to join in. It'd be it'd be kind of cool. I was going to play it on 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 Tuesday. Uh, on I, I mean, I did play it on Tuesday, but um, I I wasn't in the uh, really really good mood for streaming because I was kind of a bit coffee and spluttery, so I didn't do it last week. Um, so we're going to do it this week instead, and then um, and then the week after we'll pick another retro game. I don't know what it'll be, but uh, unless there's a unless there's a good um, indie game that we can play instead. Uh, so yeah, if anybody does know of any uh, new uh, upcoming kind of co-op indie games, uh, even if it's not co-op, multiplayer, uh, I would say, uh, it's fine if it's like a versus shooter or something like that, but it does need to be, uh, uh, you got confused in Discord. You just get confused in life, I think, Andy. Uh, it, it does need to be multiplayer because obviously it's not going to be much fun playing a single player uh, game on a multiplayer stream. So, uh, so yeah, if anybody does know of anybody, or if anybody's working on something as well, I mean, if you are, uh, if you are developing something yourself or you work for a company that's developing something that's multiplayer and you, um, 
are happy for us to play it on stream, then we'll definitely do that. Because I do want to start uh, doing a bit more indie game, uh, indie game stuff. Because it's it's something I'm really uh, interested in. I, I like the fact that indie games are really the only kind of games nowadays that actually um, do anything new and inventive. So um, I, I I really want to kind of push that. Plus, I think I think the uh, indie indie game community deserves does deserves that as well. There. They do write some freaking amazing games and they don't get the the exposure that they need. Not that I think, you know, my channel is ever going to give it some exposure, but every little bit helps. Uh, a driving game would be fun to watch, maybe. Yeah, I've got Forza as well. So, I mean, but... Yeah, I mean, we could maybe do a Forza stream at some point, but uh, again, it'd be good if we could find... Uh, Although that has got multiplayer bits in it as well. Oh, that's that's my driving style all over at Um I'm not a, I'm not one of these kind of sim racer nuts who who has to have everything kind of um, super realistic and all that. I do have a wheel, and, and although I haven't been using it for Forza, um, but that's as far as I go. For me, if I can get into a corner fast enough, if I'm in second place. And first place is just ahead of me. Then they are going to be used as a break on the next corner. Absolutely, I'm going to bounce off them round the corner if I can. Why not? Right? It's the it's the easiest way half the time. Okay, so we've drawn a new uh, new thing here, and now I'm just going to draw uh, a star. So I'm hoping in uh, in the Chekanoid uh, GitHub. Oh, actually, no, I don't need that, do I? I've already have it in Asaprite. Uh, da, da, da. No, it's not in here, though, is it? Let me uh, open. Oh, and I've still not done the Luna 65 stuff as well. So it's like, I mean, it's it's complete. It works, but I, I want, want better uh, sprites. And Warlock did draw the sprites. I just need to add a little bit of shading to them and uh, try and decide on the palettes how the palettes are going to work between them and then write the code for the the 16-bit sprite stuff but um no it's not that either is it? it's in here source it's, it's that one isn't it yeah there we go right so i'm hoping in here there will be a sprite star somewhere uh i think it's that it must be that yeah, I don't know why it's got a black border on it, but um, oh, I guess it's so that they kind of appear over there. Well, I mean, I'm not going to add the black border and it's just not going to happen. Uh, but we can add a sprite in quite easily and they're not going to rotate either. So they're just going to appear and uh, kind of explode, if you like, across the screen. So. Uh, tell you I'm loving Asaprite. Wrote a little script to it, but maybe uh, I've been using it. Yeah, it's it, Asaprite is brilliant. I absolutely love it. I mean, I I would be surprised if there are any, especially indie devs that are making pixel art games, um, and aren't using Asaprite because it's just so powerful. It's it's just designed for exactly this kind of work. Uh, it's it's very 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 good, uh, and yeah, the scripting stuff is is spot on it's it's really really nice and the fact that you can you can either write something which um acts as a plugin inside asaprite so you've got an export plugin inside asaprite uh, actually you can write, i think you can write other plugins as well i think you can do um, stuff that will actually affect the data rather than just exporting it as well um but also that you can write external scripts which just process the data the, the actual asaprite files and outputs are very easy to work with um which is nice okay let's draw this sprite so so this is a star let's just draw it in the middle and then i will uh position it like well top middle and then i'll position it centrally when we get to uh that point let me just add the grid on and change the grid settings Just makes it easier to look at the sprites properly. All right, two, two. 
but it also has some nice stuff. So when you're doing um, when you're doing like new stuff and you're not just copying stuff, which is what I I do mostly when I'm doing the C64 stuff is copy stuff. But when I'm kind of right drawing new stuff, it's got some really really helpful stuff. Like it's got this this ink thing here, uh, and you can c click it to shading, and then you can set a palette of of shades of color. So say you want um, say you want to shade something, you want an object that's green, right? So you can pick a palette that go, goes from green down to black, uh, and then you can draw. And then the first time you draw, it'll draw with the bright color. Uh, and then as you draw over it, it will draw a darker, but the second time you do a darker one. Uh, in fact, let me quickly show you, because it's a really nice feature. Um, let's just go indexed. Let's pick a, what's a good palette. The Google UI palette's nice. and then if you want to draw something so say i draw uh let's do a filled circle okay so i've got this filled circle now if i go into here and go into shading i can select the colors in the palette so if i go from here oops shit hang on do that again ah how do i how do i get rid of that one do i Looks, I've broken the shade. Let me let me change it back and go back again. I know, but you can set these colors basically. And and what happens is, there we go. Right, set the colors in the palette. Right, so I'm going to go from dark. No, I'm going to go from light to dark like that. Right. So now what happens is, if I if I draw something, so i'm in shady mode though aren't I? okay so let me just draw like so and if i go into shading mode what happens is is if i pick a, a a pen and a brush so i go like this this size brush and i set my shading now what will happen is the first time i go over so i'm just keeping the mouse down now uh it draws in this color right so i can i can draw a kind of a rough shape like so and there we go, right? So, but then the next time I press it, it goes a lighter color as well. So you can do. I mean, I've got the colors the wrong way around here, but you get the idea. You can you can do shading like that, and then when you you go over it like that, you see how it it kind of works out what the shade should be based on what colors you put in. Really, really powerful, uh, really, really powerful thing for for proper artists. I mean, for me, it's kind of pointless. But you can see how if you just keep shading over a certain point, it will get lighter and lighter and lighter. And if you do the palette the other way around, it'll get darker and darker and darker. Um, so it makes it easy to kind of shade things in because if you ever go overlap on places, it will work out which color you're overlapping and then darken that color. Um, really, really useful. Anyway, definitely recommend it if you are um, if you are doing stuff, it's very easy to uh, convert the, the files as well into something that you can use. Okay, right, anyway, back to this. Uh, so that's wrong. Like so oh, I'm starting to get a bloody headache now as well. Let's do another half an hour and then we'll finish. Oops. Okay, there we go. Nice and simple star. Uh, just using the same star from here. We're going to center this now. Uh, I don't suppose it really matters if it's centered or not. I mean, in fact, no, let's center it. It, makes, it just makes positioning it a bit easier. Uh, and then on this one, I'm actually going to... No, that's fine as well. All right. Okay, cool. So that's, that's the new sprites set. So let's export those. Where are they actually exported to? There they are. Okay, cool. Um, even though my machines with four by four pieces a better result than my earlier attempts. The the thing I really like about um about Asaprite as well is it is it's it's kind of intuitive. There's there's not a lot in it that feels complicated. Everything feels really simple to use. And also there's tons and tons of uh tutorials online on how to do various things on it. And it's got really nice stuff for um 
for tile mapping as well and texturing as well. So it's got, um, to show you again, it's got this uh, tile mode somewhere. So it tiles this in both axes, right? So if I draw something on here now, uh, you can see it draws nice and neatly together. So you can create nicely kind of uh, symmetrical things, you know, seam seamless tiling quite easily. And yeah, it's super easy to do. So just you know, lots and lots of cool stuff in it. And it is just really simple and it has a Commodore palette in it. I mean, anything that comes with a C64 palette built in uh, is just amazing. You know, there you go, C64 palette straight away. And you can also do, uh, you can do double width pixels as well. So you can make it use index palette, black background, double width pixels. And then when I do a pixel of one, we've got Commodore pixels now as well. The only thing it doesn't do is color limitations. So it doesn't doesn't handle uh you can't say like only this many colors in one uh one side uh, one uh in one eight by eight block. Uh not the Steam this is the Steam version, yeah. Although you can get it for free. If you download it and compile it yourself, you can get it for free. Yeah, it doesn't do color crash, yeah. Uh but it, I mean I I designed the dot cosmos two logo with this. Um and it was pretty easy to design it in this and then convert it to a C64 bitmap as well. Right, anyway, I digress. Let's uh, let's get back to this. Okay, so we've got the new sprites in there now. Let's start with the door closing um, because regardless of whether this spawns or not, I think what we should probably do is uh, make sure that that room only activates once when we go in and not multiple times um it should be relatively simple to do um if it's not already set up i don't think it is set up um we're probably going to have to do something in this um to make sure so that where we've got this warning counter here we're probably going to have to do something uh just to see whether or not we should be doing anything in here at all or whether the screen will be empty i mean it should be empty once you go back in again um there's probably in the actual game you can probably go in um I'd, actually i don't know if the door opens when you've completed it or when you pick up the the bonus it might be only when you pick the bonus up um yeah you can decide i always when i'm trying to explain to people um about the the kind of the the difference in in developing a game for a Commodore sixty four, developing a game for a modern system, um, I always say you know well it's sixty four kilobytes you know games are loaded into sixty four kilobytes and less I mean we have competitions to do four kilobyte games sixteen kilobyte games, and on a on a modern computer that's the size of a thumbnail, that's the size of a JPEG thumbnail on a site somewhere that's not even the full image that's just a that's just a tiny thumbnail um and it, it kind of blows their mind that we can not only create a game but all the sound all the graphics everything fits into that tiny little amount of space it just shows how wasteful we are that spider's right up there i swear it's looking at me it's planning it's nighttime attack that's gonna die so that in about half an hour from now i'm going to be torching a spider on my roof don't like that. Anyway, um, yeah, there are one. There's some really good. Uh, there's some really good PC demos that are done in in one kilobyte, and they're insane, absolutely insane. Um, I don't care if they bite. Uh, it, you know, my problem with them is is not so much that they bite. It's this. It's just the wriggliness and the fact that, and this is small enough to crawl in my ear. Mm. I don't want that. I don't want that. All right, let's uh, let's have a look at this Robo Prize. Okay, so at the moment, Robo Prize is. Uh, just doing this border change thing. So what we'll do, we'll put an RTS in here so it stops doing that. 
and then what we'll do is in the main dynamic screen uh we'll set the door to begin opening as well so we need to just have a look at how that is actually triggered in here so uh we do doors update and then we have this state so we set the next state to close door so i think if we do let me just try this if i do before we jump to the prize in it we'll do we'll just do zero one uh and then set that as the next day and hopefully that will open the door when we've killed the last thing so uh, <laughs> Oh, don't do one based on spiders. God damn it. <laughs> really don't like... Do you know, the weird thing is, I don't mind big spiders. Like, a, a, a tarantula, no problem. I'll, I mean, I'm I'm still very wary of them. Uh, but I will hold one. I've held tarantulas and I'm absolutely fine with that. It's the little ones I don't like. Little and wiry. They're the ones I don't like. And the, there was one... I was in uh, Bali a couple of years ago. And there was one sat on the wall in, in our, uh, our uh, kind of a palm or whatever you'd call it um and the the owner uh, like came because the owner kept coming around and giving us like breakfast and stuff which was kind of cool she'd come and cook us a uh, nasi goreng every morning it was really nice fried rice some fried rice with an egg on it for breakfast really good um but she um she came around one morning and i pointed to this oh, it's, it's harmless completely harmless but it was like it was massive and it was horrible as well. It was this horrible, wiry thing with like a really kind of shiny blue look to it. Whoa. Did you ever play the Krieger game? No. It sounds like I don't want to either. I keep catching it in the corner of my eye. It's bugging me. Made it through most system without having to reboot. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's check this Robotron room out now. Hopefully the door will open and then we can test the next step which is we come out of this room and go back in and see if the the room has remained inactive so the door did open that's good and we can go oh no we can't we've got a crash why have we got a crash okay so that's interesting uh huh okay um do we have to do anything when we leave this screen uh, shouldn't have to i don't think but let me check on another screen the register entities update entities okay but we've not got entities on this screen so we don't need to do that um Okay, let me try going onto another screen and coming back. So let me go the other way um, and see what happens. Maybe, maybe there's an unload function I'm missing or something. Yeah, no exit routine loaded. Krieger, German for Warriors, the first person shoot video game. Uh, Create by German, which one first? Oh, I think I did see that actually. I think I did see that. I vaguely remember that, yes. Yeah, I think I did see that. It's, it looks a little bit Quake-like, doesn't it? It's got like, uh, because it's all like procedurally generated and stuff. I think I've, I think I've, I've seen that, yeah. Okay, so loading that way and that way seems to work. So it just seems to be this room. For some reason, coming back out of this room causes a problem. Okay, one thing I notice is there's something gone blue up here, but it could be that when we enter the Robotron screen, we set some certain variables, which, because we do have the is a Robotron screen variable, right? Um, maybe that needs to be cleared or something. Yeah, this one here. So if we do that in the callbacks, let me find callback. Because we want this screen to kind of handle it itself. Um, so here, basically, 
So if we just do that, so it's no longer a Robotron screen. Because at that point, the Robotron's finished, right? So it doesn't need to be a Robotron screen anymore. Uh, and where is this actually being called? So this is being called in spawn. Hang on. Is there any spawn being called? It's, a, oh, it's all tail calls, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so instead of doing this, so instead of doing the update, what is it doing? It's going to the spawn. The spawn is saying we're finished, so it's going to the callback. The callback is in here, so it's going to RoboPrising it, which is then returning. I mean, this should be fine. In fact, it is fine until I try and exit the screen. So let's see what happens with that new, new piece in. Who's that? Is that Drew Carey? Is it Drew Carey? I can't tell. It is, yeah. All right. It's it's absolutely fine if I don't leave this room. And then something breaks, and it seems to draw something down here as well. You see, yeah, it's blocked out a piece here. So let's take a look at the other screens and see what happens on those when we leave. So uh, let's take a look at screen 21, because we know this one works, right? Um, so it has screen 21 dynamic exit, screen 21 dynamic update. Okay, so we should have the same in here, 20 donor exit. And 21 uh, dynamic exit was the one that deregisters all the entities and then returns. And in screen 20 exit, we just have an RTS, which should be enough. So what is failing there then? We can go into the screen fine, but we can't come out of the screen. Hmm. Um, hmm, okay. So, okay, let's have a look what's set up in here in the init. So we set some performance stuff. Uh, we set some counters. Uh, we, we freeze the player, which is fine. We know that's going to be the case. Um, Robotron complete, but I mean, that's... That's fine because that needs to stay and then the init warning. So actually the initialization for the Robotron is pretty much nothing anyway. Um, I mean, if we put an RTS, let's put an RTS in here. Let's make sure that the screen does nothing and then and, and see what happens. Can we go in and come out? Is it something that's been set um, as part of that screen setup that's actually preventing us from leaving that screen again? So hopefully this time when I go in the screen, it shouldn't do anything. We should just... The init should get called and then it should exit. So there'd be no, um, there'd be no Robotrons loaded. There'd be no warning. The door won't shut, uh, and I won't have to complete anything because the door will remain open. No, see, there's a crash there. Okay, so there's something weird about going from that screen to that screen, which makes me think that the screen positions are wrong, like it's trying to get the wrong screen. So let's have a look um, in map load next screen wherever it is and see if it is actually getting the right number screen it might just be getting the wrong information for that screen it might not know that it's uh the the same exit for some reason um load up next screen okay so uh screen map direction load map connections comma x Uh, load map's probably the better one here. All right.
okay there we go so the, the accumulator at this point tells us what the, the what screen we're on so or what screen we want to move to dumpster diving what the hell Oh, and then you put Kellogg. I was confused why that was the dumpster dive when it's not. I can't remember what Acme Fin series was now. I need to have a look. Oh, oh, it's a good one. This I like this one. This is this is cool. This is this is a cool one. I like this. Uh, okay, right. Let's run this. I think we'll finish soon anyway. We'll work out what this is next time. It's a good one. I, I do. I do like this idea. It's a, it's a good idea. Because it's one you can kind of figure out once you've got some of the bits. You can kind of work out what the other bits are, sort of, maybe. Okay, so we can see that screen 1.5 is indeed the first screen we want to load in, which is screen 21. And we can see screen 21 loads here. If we go into here, it should say 1.4. It does. So we'd expect when we try and go back that it say one five again, uh, which it does. Okay, so the screen number is correct, but then it fails. Um, so we'll spend the next ten minutes trying to figure out why that fails. Um, but I think this might be one for next time. I think I'm I'm pleased with tonight. We've we've uh, done all right. Got a few things working. I mean, the, the that screen is almost finished now, which is nice. Um, register bashed hmm i don't know because maybe maybe i need to not do these tail but i can't think why the tail calls would break stuff so the problem the problem we've got is when we go when this callback is called so what happens actually sorry let's start from the uh beginning so this is called this update so this is called every frame as part of the main game loop so where's the game loop um oh by the way did they did anybody's um sid tunes from the last last month end up on csdb be interesting to know if they put them on there I mean, this is this is the only t the only um, uh, this this is the only case where I'd actually think it's fine to put them on CSDB, put stuff on CSDB. Uh, the music, who, who did anybody's uh, music from the last competition end up on on CSDB? Oh, it's on H. Really? It's on HVSC already. Wow. Okay. Man, that was quick. It's only been two weeks. Ah, wow. <laughs> As loud. Thank you very much for the resub, my command. 19 months in a row. Uh, you guys are all addicts. Probably gambling addicts more than your shallow addicts, I think. Um, okay, yeah, so we call... Uh, where is it? Where is it? Oh, this is the main loop. This is it. Okay. Uh, and somewhere around here, there will be a map update. So this thing here. 
So what this call does is it looks at what map is currently loaded. So it looks in the map table to work out which map is currently loaded. And then it calls the update function on that. And the update function is this, this thing in here. So every screen has an init, an update, and an exit. So you have an initialize, you have a you have a setup, you have an update, you have a teardown, uh, and the update is is this one here, uh, and that's called by this. So that's it's jumped to this subroutine, and then this just jumps directly into that update. And we have to do this because we want these to be in the same position all the time. Um, you know, always plus three for an update, plus six for an exit, plus zero for an init. So it makes these update tables. You only have to store one address which is the the start address of the screen uh, and then they jump to dynamic addresses within these dynamically loaded pieces of code so these pieces of code are loaded from cartridge which it does um so it goes and loads this piece and then jumps to that update which is fine it's doing that so maybe it's not jump maybe one of these is not loading the second time round for whatever weird reason but they wouldn't explain why it works going between two other screens, why it only breaks on this screen. Um, but yeah, anyway, so so this is what happens. It comes into this update and calls that. That's in here, which is uh, this piece here. And this basically goes, okay, we need to do some stuff here. Uh, is Robotron complete? If it's not, uh, then jump to Robotron update. As long as this screen is loaded in, um, Robotron complete will be on, uh, oh, actually, Robotron complete is going to be zero at this point. Oh no, because we return out of it. So actually it's, well, it's still going to be zero. Oh, I bet it's to do with that, you know, I bet it's to do with that. Okay. Um, because if it is zero. Hang on, let me set it to one. Okay, so we just need to work out how to clear that value properly. Um, might just be that for some reason that value, that update function is still being called even though th that code has been replaced by something else which might have a zero at that point, and therefore it's crashing because it's trying to call the update function. No, see, it's still crashing the same way. So, okay, so it's not that anyway. Um, but when it is when this screen is running, uh, it was, well, actually the update is always gonna be called. So this is always gonna get called while we're on this screen. And this does the doors update and exit. So if I don't do anything in the update, let's do a return from the update as well. Uh, it clears the wall bottom left. Yeah, I've already said that. I've already noticed it did that. It's almost like it's not like loading that screen in for some reason breaks the um, breaks the data elsewhere, but I don't know why. <sighs> okay, so with no init and no update, it still crashes. So this is starting to imply that that something something weird is going on that that's causing crash. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to load in either of these things now. Uh, I'm just going to return from this in it straight away. It could be it could be something in memory. Maybe maybe there's an area of memory which we're overwriting which prevents it from loading in the next bit. In which case we need to do some investigation. I probably need to write a proper memory map for this so look at where we are with everything. It's not going to work now, is it? Because it's not got the right code there. Yeah. Um, shit, I'm going to do this. Is it still going to try and do these? Okay, let's keep that. 
and we'll assume that Robotron is not there. So let's go back into here. The RTS, actually, it doesn't matter, does it, if I just... Making a mess of what I'm trying to do. Making it more complicated than it should be. Right, there we go. I bet it's to do with that location. I might need to find somewhere better to... to store that. Uh... Okay, it's fine though. There's there's places we can do it. Yes. Okay. So it's to do with the loading of this dynamic code here. So let's try some stuff now. So let's have a look first of all at uh, the dynamic codes, screen codes. And let's move this one down a bit. Maybe if I just move uh, Robotron down to A400. Let's just try that for now. Uh, and then that means I need to change it in here. And go back into here and... I bet there's a I bet there's some code overwriting at the end somewhere, so I might need to do some memory uh, checks on the next next stream. Uh, just sort out. I think we need to do a memory map. I think I need to get everything written down exactly what's been used, where, what's safe to use, what's not safe to use, and then that will help me quite a lot. There's loads of low memory as well that I'm, I've probably not used as well, which we could move stuff into, or have, I might move stuff into already actually. Um, but there's also the sprite area as well. So the sprite area um, has room for tons of sprites, but we don't need to have them all loaded on every screen. We only need a handful of sprites for each screen, so they can be dynamically loaded in as well, which gives us a whole kind of 12 kilobytes or so of, of room that we can play with there. Maybe use constants. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, actually. Uh, why is that not loading in properly there? Have I done something wrong? A400. Right, so this is the dynamic code. This is A000, and this isn't that long, really. So there's no way this would be... Maybe it is so. Hang on, let me. Uh... Yeah, it's, I mean, it's barely using anything. That's right down here. So that would that should be fine to use. Why is that not working? It's crashing when it gets in there. I feel like there's some areas of this memory that's probably not that great to use. Let me just put it back. So this is the original. Just get it working how it was originally, and then I'll try relocating it around a bit. Because there is the huge chunks of memory that we're not using at the moment, because the sprites, um, the sprites don't use all that memory up, so I could quite easily get them to uh, load into a you know, four kilobyte block in the top of memory. Okay, it's not loading at all now. All right, let's. Let's work out what the hell I've done here. What have I done? All right, so, oh, because, God damn it, I'm an idiot. I'm calling the functions, but not loading the code in, so.
Oh, I check this and then I'm going to go to bed, I think. Yeah, okay, right, this is working. So let's go in here, kill this. Yeah, okay, so it's just memory locations. So as I say, it, it's going to be quite easy for us to move stuff around. So I'll quickly demonstrate this before I go. Um, as I say, we're not using all the memory for sprites. In fact, when we, we saw before, uh, come on, load up. So we'll pause it again, put three zero in here so we can see the sprite memory uh, and then jump into sprite memory uh, in here. So you can see these are the sprites are in multicolor mode for some reason, I don't know why, but um, actually that's quite annoying, isn't it? Why are they in multicolor mode? Where was that view I had before? Yeah, they're in multicolor mode, that's, that's annoying. Um, anyway, these, these are all the sprites that you can see here, but as you go down here, you'll notice blank, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of blank. Um, and that's because we're not using that memory, that, that memory, apart from these end blocks here, which are, uh, I don't know what they're set for, but it looks like there's something being used there. It looks like some kind of characters or something, but, um, and there's a huge chunk of memory up here, which is just not being used. And that's because we're allowing these sprites to extend all the way down here. Uh, but you can see we've, we've got a lot of sprites already and we're not gonna need to have everything on the screen at all times. We can load chunks in as we need them. Um, so, and, and it's, it's fast enough to load because we're loading from cartridge. So in theory, we can do something like this. We can move this up to this area of memory instead. And that gives us a lot more room to do stuff up there. In fact, this is probably the sensible thing to do. Um, and you could even um, you could even include the sprite data in that dynamic code because it's in the sprite area. Um, it wouldn't be too difficult to just include the sprite data in that area, um, so you wouldn't have to load two things. It's not loading though for some reason. Why is it not loading? Oh, because I didn't save it. There we go. And yes, I mean it's using four four kilobytes of uh what's that? Oh, because now we've got this thing. So yeah. I think what we'll do on the next stream is um we'll we'll take Nicomo's suggestion and add in some um Let's make that FF00. Um, we'll add in some uh, some constants. We'll turn this into a macro, I think, so that we can um, we can just basically, you know, write a little like mem mem check or something like that, and put a size in. Uh, you put you put the name in up here and the size, and then it will it will just work this out based on that. So we don't have to do this every time and use some constants for some of these locations. And then build an actual um, memory map. So we'll, in the in this main cart file here, at the top, I'll just put a memory map in here. So we've got a, a, a nice record of where everything is. Um, so instead of having to kind of guess all the time, we can we can really kind of get it worked out properly. Uh, good night, my command. Thanks for joining. Uh, see you again soon, hopefully. So yeah, so we'll just uh, quickly demonstrate that this is working. You can see there you go. So it's nice that we can move things around as well because it's dynamic code. It, it doesn't like matter where it is um, as long as it's got enough room to load in. But obviously there's something in that area um, that if we overwrite it, it causes problems. I don't know what it is. I can't remember what it is. We've done a lot of code, um, but we'll we'll have a sift through and see what's going on. It's probably something to do with the map loader, um, maybe to do with kind of persistence data or something like that. I'm not sure, but... We can move stuff around. We can move it up to that top area of memory. There's plenty of room up there to do stuff, uh, which will actually free room up down the bottom to do more um, more things if we want to do them as well. So, yeah, that's it for tonight. Thanks for joining. Uh, sorry if I've been a bit croaking, a bit gross with the uh, coughing and sneezing. Uh, I've actually, felt, you know, I felt better because of the uh, cider. It's been nice. It's, uh, it's helped kind of clear things out a little bit. So um, hopefully by Saturday I'll be perfectly all right again. But let's find someone to raid, shall we? Uh, some little raid buttons. There they are.
because I'll, oh, I'll let the race finish as well, I guess. Noodles on... Noodles always finishing when I raid Noodle, because she's in the UK. Let's see, is she finishing? No, she's still playing, actually. What is she playing? Space Quest. Awesome. All right, well, we'll raid, we'll raid, uh, we'll raid Noodle in a minute. We'll just let the quiz, uh, the uh, the race play out. Um, but yeah, cool. Thank, thanks, guys, for joining tonight. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for all the the, the bits and the, the subs and stuff. Really good. Um, really looking forward to to. Um, uh to the christmas stream and giving all all the prizes away it's gonna be a lot of fun uh oh speaking of which we'll, on this saturday as well i was going to do the bitmap soft giveaway last week uh, i'll confirm with jamie again that the, that it's still good to do because i just need to make sure i think it is uh but we'll give away um uh a, a free game of the winner's choice uh to uh from the bitmap soft site on on saturday uh and we'll use it as a, a an excuse for testing marbles on stream so um, hopefully I'll see you all uh, there on Saturday for that and a bit of kind of crazy maths checking and stuff. So, um, yeah. Okay, right. Let's uh, let's start the raid now because the race is almost finished. Mayhem's won it. Cool. All right. Um, I shall see you all very, very soon then. I'm going to finish this. Uh, I'm going to go and chill out in bed and fall asleep and wake up tomorrow and feel fucking brilliant, hopefully. Fingers crossed. If not, I've maybe got a husky voice forever. My voice is always quite deep anyway. I can add huskiness to it. All right. Good night, guys. Take care. Bye.